So then the Raw show opened up with Jey Uso coming out, and he basically said that he thinks that uh, CM Punk should go to Raw. And talked about Drew McIntyre, said it was terrible what Drew had done to Sammy last week. Storyline is that uh, Sammy has a partially torn meniscus. So it looks like he's going to be out of action for a while. And then Drew came out on the ramp. I, 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 was, I was told that he'd asked for time off. I mean, and, and, and the partially torn meniscus may be um, legit because guys are always hurt anyway. But I just remember um, last week I was told that um, Sammy was – or actually, yeah, it was last week I was told. It was right after Sammy had done the angle. Um, but the person who told me did not know about the angle. But he just said, like, Sammy's going to be off for a while. Um, he asked for time off, not, not over an injury or anything like that. And I said, Oh, you know, they did the thing. And so, Oh, that's probably his injury angle. So it, it, it's, it's, it's not, you know, again, like, I don't know if he, he, if he's got the partially torn meniscus or not, he, you know, he very possibly does, but he'd actually asked for time off regardless of injury situation. So Drew came out and he said, Nick Aldis, you know, you can have Punk. Nobody wants him in this locker room. He'll destroy this place from the inside out. And the fans boo. And Drew says, you know this guy? I do. I travel the world with him. I know his story. I know it ends. And this is not about him. He said Sammy was at home right now and maybe he had something to do with that. But Sammy ran his mouth, crossed the line when he talked about his family. And uh, this led to Drew McIntyre and Jey Uso. And they had a long match, went through two commercial breaks, and uh, big near falls at the end. The ref went to put a corner pad back on, so Drew took the opportunity to gouge the eyes of Jey Uso. And then he hit the Claymore, and he pinned him. So uh, it took, yeah, took a while to get the match going, but once they got going, it got really good there at the end. I thought, I thought it was a really good match. Um, you know, And obviously Drew McIntyre and Seth Rollins, January 1st, going to be uh, uh, for the championship. Um, it's interesting because if it is Punk and Rollins at WrestleMania, and if there had been no Punk, um, it could have been the Rollins and um, McIntyre match. I don't know that. But that, you know, putting everything together, remember McIntyre being really upset. Um, maybe that had something to do with it. Um, you know, it's like kind of like, uh, you know, kind of figuring that maybe he's the odd man out because certainly um you know they're going to you know it's very clear they're going to Rollins and Punk and you know the next segment or one of the next segments like made that very very clear and um kind of interesting they did that before the um I mean they they did it because they had to do it but you know before because it kind of tells people like with Rollins and and McIntyre um, kind of leads you to believe McIntyre isn't going to win. I suppose they could have him win and uh, lose it back in a rematch and then go back to that Mania match. You can do it that way. WWE usually hasn't been under Levesque, but it doesn't mean that you can't, you can't do that. But, um, but yeah, it, it feels like no matter what happens, um, you know, McIntyre's not going to have a long run as champion. And, or, or, or I mean, if he, if he can win, which is doubtful, it, it's probably not going to be a long run at this point. We had a Nakamura promo, hyping up the match with Cody later, and then a segment with Finn, JD, and Dom, and Rhea's back there, and basically she says, you know, Priest, it seems that saying you're the leader is easier than being the leader. So Priest starts to get angry, and Rhea says, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking about this entire family here. Sick of the disrespect that... Uh, What's going on here? I want to show the world we still run raw. I don't let anybody in my division disrespect me, and I'm going to take that out on Maxine tonight. And so uh, it's Rhea versus Maxine Dupree. And my this, God, this match. Oh, my God. This, oh, my. This, this, it was like they only went out there for like two minutes, but I think they messed up four spots in two minutes. I am pretty sure that Maxine mistimed every single spot that she tried. And she looked like it was the first match she'd ever been in in her life, untrained. And, uh, well, oh, my the, God. The, 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 she, she's only had a handful of matches. I know, but I just saw her have a match on NXT last week, and she was in there with Lash Legend, and it was fine. This was yeah. not fine. 
This was a disaster. And so Rhea finally hit her with her finish, which also was mistimed, put her in the prison lock, which I guess you can't screw up because she just cranked on her, and uh, got the submission, and then had to stare down with Ivy afterwards. Holy smokes, this was one to see. Holy smokes. They, um, yeah. I mean, what can you say? I mean, they, they, from the very start, it just, I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't like it was, um, like the crowd didn't like, you know, the crowd was very forgiving of them. You know, like another crowd in another era would have just like cat called this one to death. It was like that obvious that like just, and it was, you know, it's like Rhea doing power moves and not getting her up because the timing of her going up was wrong. But, um, the, you know, like I said, like, it was very obvious because they would go right back to the move, you know, and Rhea would try to power up. And even then she would, it just felt like Rhea just had to, like, do everything, you know. And, you know, she didn't seem too happy when it was over either. And we had uh, Adam Pierce coming down to the ring with the contract. He called out CM Punk. And Punk comes out and he talks about how, you know, I had a lot of problems here in this uh, this building. I debuted here with Mickey James. It was so successful, they told me I had to go to Ohio Valley Wrestling. And then, of course, 10 years ago, I walked out of this place. And for those of you that were betrayed, and, and believe me, I know what you feel like, because that's how I felt when Roddy Piper went to WCW, so I apologize. I've gone to SmackDown, NXT, Adam Pierce put together a great deal, and my mind was made up when I looked at the calendar and I saw Cleveland. My future starts now. Couldn't write a better TV show. Ten years, almost to the day I walked out. Now I'm walking back in. And if you're happy you know about it. Mention, you know what he didn't mention about Cleveland? What's that? First UFC fight. How about that? Yeah, he didn't mention that. Yeah, yeah. Which probably, I, I mean, it's like, it was probably his most memorable thing. Well, it was. It was his you know, it was the biggest payoff that he ever he ever got, and it was probably the most memorable publicized thing that he ever did. In, it's certainly in Cleveland, um, but you know, it's certainly also something that there's no reason to bring up, especially now. And Seth came out, and uh, they went face to face, and Seth cut a promo, basically saying that uh, don't you dare call this your home. You abandoned this place 10 years ago. Not only that, you tried to tear it down. Spent 10 years slandering me, slandering everybody in the locker room. Now you want to come back here and call this your home? This is my home. I've been here. Everybody in the back, they're my brothers and sisters. They're here. They're my family. This is our home. I will do everything to protect it from people like you. I want to say this plainly with every fiber of my being. I hate you. If you're going to be a part of WWE again, I want you on Raw. Because the truth always comes out, pal. And I know, and everyone else knows, this is your last chance. So one of two things is going to happen. You're either going to expose yourself, self-destruct like you always do, and I'll be the guy to slam the door on your legacy. Or if you have changed, and there's any gas left in the tank, one day you'll be lucky enough to stand across from me in a world title match. I'll expose you for the fraud that you are. I'm going to show you there are levels to this. I will wrestle circles around you. I will let you understand in real time what it means to be the best in the world. And Punk says, well, if you're done, that's your one pass to stand here and disrespect me without me coming after you. I've never asked for anything to be handed to me. Always done things the hard way. I'm entering the Royal Rumble. And when I win, maybe I'm coming after you. Now, standing segment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And plus, they paid up. They played off the Adam Page thing. Oh, they sure did. All right, they yeah, sure did. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, I mean, amazing. Um, I mean, the, dif- the difference obviously is that you know it's probably Punk's suggestion, you know, and or, or certainly his approval. So it's like completely different. But they absolutely, you know, used that. I mean, they played right off that storyline, you know, about you, we're protecting the company from you, so to speak. You know, almost using the similar, almost using the same line. We had Ibar versus Bronson Reed, and just two giant dudes just smashing each other. And, uh, you know, finish was a gigantic, very top rope superplex. Reed pinned him. And uh, this was relatively short, but, man, this was fun while lasted. Yeah, I mean, uh, not super heat or nothing, but, um, 
you know, I mean, Ivar's super talented and um, Reed's real, you know, Reed's, Reed's real good at what he does. Um, he, you know, so I think they didn't want to go along with it. And, um, you know, that was, uh, you know, I think it was, what, seven and a half minutes, I think. Um, seven minutes, 48 seconds. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I thought it was, it, was, it was good for what it was. Yeah. Ivar did a nice cannonball off the top rope to the floor. Landed on his back, seemed to jack his back a little bit, um, and then. Uh, but maybe that that played into the superplex thing to finish that he because they went right to that. Orange sold the knee, which is he got attacked. I don't remember him getting attacked. Matt Menard on said he was attacked the night before, which would have been ROH. So it's it probably ROH. Are you smoking or what's happening what? here? I don't, what the fuck? What is, is going happening, on? <laughs> I have no bro? Clue. What is it? Dude. I think there's not, I've changed nothing. Smoking is room. bad enough for you, but you don't need right. to do it on the air. What is happening here? God. I, I'm glad I'm not the only one experiencing this. Did you die? <laughs> I've ascended. Yeah. I don't know. And it looks like it's changing colors, too, which is weird. It's going from red to blue. What the hell's flashing? <laughs> I don't know, man. Yeah, everyone's saying this, shut man. your lines, dude. They're completely closed. Oh my god. Maybe I don't open know them. What is There we go. The sun moved. Well, uh, yeah, the sun actually the No. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. The sun will continue to move <laughs> and then we'll be able to see again. <laughs> we then had uh Abaddon take on Trish Adora. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.